Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm going to color a realistic little storybook bunny. This is a sweet little stamp set from a new to me company named Hello Bluebird, and it has a rabbit and a mouse. And I recently saw this little rabbit when I was out walking in a park. This park has lots and lots of bunnies. And what I noticed about all the bunnies there, because I'm trying to figure out if they're different breeds of bunnies or all the same, but they have kind of a brown to them, but they also have a gray to them. And that's what I'm going to use for my bunny rabbit coloring today. And I'm going to use my polychromos pencils. These are the color numbers. If you need to know what those are, they will be in a JPEG over on my blog as well. What I'm going to do is start off by coloring one color underneath and then add another color over top of it. You don't always have to go with a darker brown to shade a brown. You can go with something like a gray. So I'm going to be doing that, but I want this warm color so that this kind of looks like one of those bunnies that I saw in the park. And I, I want the warmth of the brown, but I want the naturalness of that gray that you also saw in that mottled fur that was kind of multicolored. And so that's what I'm going to be doing here. Uh, the insides of bunnies' ears sometimes are black, sometimes they're white, not always pink. I don't know why we always tend to make them pink, except for maybe it's all the cartoons we've seen, then um, that sort of thing, perhaps but um, I'm going to make sure that they're looking fairly realistic here. So I'm using a dark gray that's more of a cool gray kind of a color and then I can add on top of that a little bit of black to add the contrast because contrast is what makes things pop. It's what makes an image start to look rounded and like it's got some real dimension. So you can see just adding that real depth of color makes a big difference. It doesn't have to be black, it could be whatever other dark color you want to use, but something so that you go from a really white white all the way to a really dark dark. And having that range of values is really going to make a big difference in the, the realism of your drawing. Now, it's never going to be perfectly realistic to have a bunny rabbit that's wearing a hat and a dress. So we take that with a grain of salt, but there you go. I have never seen one running around in the park wearing a hat and a dress. But this is a warm gray, and remember I used a cool gray earlier, so using a warm gray for the lights just adds another bit of that color difference in that bunny. As, as he runs around, you can see all the different colors in him as different light hits him. I wanted to use a yellow for the dress on the bunny because of course yellow is my favorite color but instead of using a bright yellow I used a muted yellow because I didn't want it to seem super cartoonish like again <laughs> it's wearing a dress not sure why that occurred to my brain but instead of having super bright colors I just thought I'd have something a little more natural and so it's more of a golden kind of yellow rather than a bright cheerful yellow using some browns to get some of that again that contrast that dark shading and giving giving the whole thing that sense of of depth and a little bit of extra color underneath of the hat because uh, that's going to be in the shade I thought a white basket would be fun for this little bunny and I did pick a green that has a real pop to it and that's one of the places where when you keep other things muted then the colors that do pop really jump off the page as opposed to if everything is bright then nothing stands out. But here the green really leaps off the page because of the brightness of it. And I debated what color to make the, the apron that she's wearing and I decided for a very light version of the same green and I can do that by just using less pressure and allowing it to get to white by the time it gets to the front of her little apron. And that way I'm going to end up with something that feels like another shade of that same green pencil. Add a little bit more shading underneath of the basket because that'll have a shadow cast on it. 
and I can lighten this up a little bit more later, but I'm going to darken just a few of those areas with that gray pencil just to add a little bit more of that contrast. Another color that I thought would be fun to add for a little pop is this purplish color because that's going to have, again, a whole nother look to it from all of these very natural colors. And by the way, when I did the stamping, I stamped the, the mushrooms first, masked those out, and then stamped the bunny. And then this background scene, there's a larger scene in the stamp set that I'll show you in just a minute. And I stamped it in a really light ink and I stamped it off first so that I was gonna get a really, really light outline of just part of it. So I didn't even put the ink on the whole thing I stamped it off on another piece of paper and then stamped it on here because I just wanted those trees and this little hint of a road. Just a little tiny bit of it, didn't need to have much because I wanted to have a little tiny vignette of a scene. Also notice that it's off center and both vertically and horizontally. That's going to give the whole thing more movement than it would have if I just had the whole thing centered in the center of the card, which is what we kind of naturally do. We, we just plop things right in the middle. But I wanted the words to be framed by this whole vignette of a scene. And I'll continue it off for a little bit of balance by having some shadows going out the back side behind her, just a little tiny bit. But if you end up with things like, you know, those outside edges not blending out enough, or if your scene gets too dark or something, use a kneaded eraser, K-N-E-A-D-E-D. -E -E kneaded eraser, it's very soft, and it's going to be able to lighten some of that color. So you can lighten the edge of the road where that thing blends. You can lighten her, her uh, apron a little bit if you're not getting enough contrast because it was seeming like everything was that same green. You wanted to lighten it up just a tidge and then lighten up that background because it was darker than I wanted. On this Stonehenge paper, I find it erases quite nicely and I can really control very carefully by squishing the kneaded eraser. I can control exactly which areas I'm lightening. But here's that whole scene. So you can see I only kept the trees and that little part of the road and the rest of it I just didn't stamp. So I've popped it onto some dimensional adhesive, tied some twine around the bottom, and I added emphasis to the scene by putting my bow over on the right-hand side, right near the scene. And I'll tighten it up a little bit, trim off the edges, and then put a dot of glossy accents right underneath of the bow so it'll stay in place. And on the inside, I colored the mouse that was in there, but I used the same colors as I used on the front, just in a different way, made the, the dress purple instead. So that's about it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to pick up the stamp set or any of the supplies, they're all linked in the doobly-doo. And there's still pictures of everything you can pin over on my blog. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.